Welcome to another exciting episode of Transform Yourself, the podcast that's all about empowering you to shed the stubborn pounds and embrace your best selves. We are your hosts, Casey and Tyler, and we use the four M's of fitness, mind shift, meal shift, micro habits, and muscle building to create attainable and sustainable approach to weight loss. We have lost a collective 130 pounds. We've kept it off for two years, and today we are covering micro habits, the third M in form fit. If you follow me on social media, you know that mind shift is first and meal shift is second. And we have micro habits third and muscle building last. As Do we the have, last M. is there a macro habit? <laughs> a big habit, a macro habit. No, there's not. We shouldn't. Yeah, no, we need to have micro habits, not macro habits, right? I, uh, I don't know. Like I'm I just thought of that. It's like we have micro habits, which mm. I guess are small changes to your life, essentially. Right. A macro habit would be a large change. Yeah, that would be hard to do if you had a macro habit, I would imagine. I don't know. I can't think of what an example of a macro habit would be. I'm going to have to think on that one. Okay, so here's my, my game plan. I'm going to open a competing <laughs> company called Five Fit. Five, five fit, five M fit, five M fit, and it's gonna have micro and macro. Oh, it'll be good like luck. good luck. It'll be like Harlan Williams in something about Mary. Okay, where he's like seven minute abs. He's like, isn't thirty eight minutes? It's like, yeah, but seven, you, it's faster. I don't remember what he said, but and if they're not satisfied, we'll give them the eighth minute for free. So five M fit is gonna, yeah, okay. All right. Well, I look forward to it. Yeah. So <laughs> cooking videos from me. It's all going to be meat on the grill. Um, the you, know, I, thing. you know what? Meat could be the fifth M. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm six M fit. <laughs> it's just going to keep growing. Yeah. I'm just going to keep think, adding think M's. Think of all the possibilities. <laughs> yeah. Magnets. Magnets. What? Magnets for weight loss, Casey. I don't I, No, We're not. No. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they're no. You know no. what? I bet. No, I bet, sir. I bet if I go into Google right now and type in magnets weight loss, Somebody, there's something out there. There probably is. There's some gadget or protocol or something. Yeah. All right. So during the month of April, we are covering each of the four M's of fitness and the last couple of podcasts. If you have not listened to them yet, you might want to back yourself up and listen to the Mind Shift podcast and the Meal Shift podcast. Because today's episode is all about micro habits. In Mind Shift, we covered how to have positive self talk, change the thoughts to get change your thoughts to get the results you want. In Meal Shift, we covered the core principles, changing the way you eat to create satisfying and sustainable diet. In this podcast, we're covering micro habits, and because we've covered this topic before, I want to take it in a little bit of a different direction and give you five practical steps or an approach to building better habits. We talked about in the last podcast we did with micro habits, we talked about how to set intentions with your new habits. In this episode, I want to give you actionable items. So let's get started to the five approaches to building better habits. And some of them are a little bit of a repeat. But let me name those five. And then we're going to detail into the five. That's fine. Most people's attention span is like that of a gnat. Anyway, so if if someone listened to that and to this, like they probably... I mean, I have to hear things at I least hear, 10 times. I have to hear things a dozen times. For sure. So don't worry about repeating <laughs> yourself because that's... All right. So game. five approaches to building better habits. So approach number one is make it so small you can't fail. Approach number two is being consistent with those small goals that you just set up for yourself. Approach number three is following the never miss twice rule. Approach number four is being patient. Approach number five is focusing on wins. Okay, so backing up to approach number one. Make it so small that you cannot fail. Most people... Too small to fail. Right. The, the opposite of the the banking industry in the 2008. Yes, like very opposite. <laughs> it's too small to fail. Most people try to change way too quickly. Uh, the key is to make habits stick. So you have to make them so small that you can't say no. If you want to get in shape and you haven't 
done push-ups in years, well then start by doing one push-up. And that's okay. It's totally fine to do one push-up. To start with one push-up. That it's absolutely fine. It's okay to start where you're at, not where you want to be at. Because I can tell you, as a dude, you want to when it comes to like lifting and well doing most things, you want to start where you want to be at. And that is a recipe for injury. That is a recipe for just being bummed. <laughs> You're like, I suck. Like, I really can't. I yeah. can't do that. But you have to suck, right? You have to suck at something before you're good at it. Right. That's a fact. Truth. Instead of focusing on your long-term goal, you want to focus on breaking up that goal into chunks. So break your long-term goal. Like instead of saying, I want to lose 50 pounds and focusing on the idea that, oh man, 50 pounds is so far away. Like make a mini goal and set a goal to lose four pounds this month. And that's that's, it. That's the way it should be anyway. Because if you're at work, if you're any kind of a managed position, you get a budget that it's, oh, you need to do this much next year. But it's not given to you like in a lump sum. You get it in a monthly or quarterly basis because then it becomes attainable because you you take the elephant and you make it into bites, bites, you know, bite size. That's the only way you can do it. Absolutely. Same thing with weight loss. So make your giant goal not feel overwhelming by making it into bite size elephant chunks. <laughs> I would like to try elephant. Yeah. I bet it's tasty. I bet it tastes a lot like pork. You want really to taste an elephant? I would eat an elephant in a heartbeat. An elephant steak? Right now, I would eat it. What part steak. of the elephant would be the steak? It would be like on a cow or anything else. It'd be like like a backstrap type area. And hmm. you pull out a ribeye. I'm or pull good. Out... I don't think I need to try elephant. I don't. Mm. What if it's the best? <laughs> no. I'm okay. Good. I s- I went down. <laughs> okay. I don't. This is a rabbit hole. A Go for bit. it. Go ahead. All right. What if penguins are delicious? <laughs> I waited for you to to take a sip of your coffee before I said that because I really want you to I almost spit my coffee out on my laptop just now (laughs) for all of you listeners. Why why would anybody eat a penguin? It's a bird. You eat turkeys. I mean, I guess. We eat emus. We eat ostrich. Why would we not eat a penguin? So you want to have a penguin burger? (laughs) Yeah. Penguin wings? Drums? (laughs) Are you a drum or flat penguin guy? <laughs> Ooh, I'm in the flats. Oh, God. Dry rub. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't. Uh, mm. You're no, not curious would, at all. I would think that penguins would definitely be very lean and not have a lot of fat. Yeah. Well, maybe. Well, no. Well, any, no, I take every, that back. Wild they might game. have. Hmm. Well, okay, because they might have fat because they're because they're, they're Arctic. Yeah. So they probably. They, oh, I don't know. They might have like they a. They might fat be cap. tasty now. Now, now you got me wondering about penguin, but I don't. I'm good still. <laughs> penguin, elephant. Imagine. I'm good. Look. Imagine if it's a not penguin. in the section. If it's not in the. If it's not in the. In the you know meat section of H E B or the grocery store I'm at. That's I'm so good. boring. I'm good. I don't. I don't. Uh. I bet penguin. I'm okay delicious. with. I'm okay with being boring. Okay, well. All right. Is ta- I'm going to have to look into that. If yeah. I can buy some penguin yeah. something. Go ask the guy behind the meat counter at, at H-E-B. Like, if, oh, your finest, excuse me. Excuse can I have your me, finest sir. penguin? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So also, I mean, you can do the same thing with by taking your goal of, say, maybe you're saying to yourself, all right, I want to eat in a calorie deficit and track this for, you know, on a habit tracker for 30 days. But maybe instead of doing that, you can just make a seven day, make a goal for seven days, seven days, I'm going to pre-track my food, see how it goes. You don't have to start with an entire month. You don't have to start big. You can start small. Approach number two, be consistent with the small goals that you just set up for yourself. Bad habits happen to have immediate rewards and good habits have delayed rewards. And that's why good habits are hard to be consistent with because the rewards are delayed. Like bad habit, like smoking, drinking alcohol, eating a entire pint of full sugar ice cream, those are going to all light up the dopamine you know, area of your brain. Those pleasure neurotransmitters But good habits, exercise, nutrition, meditation, those rewards are not going to be immediate. You have to ask yourself, how can I reward myself in a positive way that is going to encourage me to continue to 
push forward with this good habit because the delayed response is that you will see reward later on. You will see maybe less stress, more energy, weight loss. Those things will come, but you have to be consistent with it. In order to be consistent, we kind of have to almost back up to approach number one, which approach number one is make your habit so small you can't fail. You have to make your habit so small that it's easy to be consistent. So do you think that, this is a thought I had, that I would imagine most, especially when it comes to like beginning of the year, and you're setting your goals for the year and your resolutions and people's resolu- what is the number one resolution? Weight loss. Every yep. like consistently lose, lose weight and exercise. Pro- right? Probably since they've been asking that question, that's probably been the answer. I think podcast one, we cover that. I think it is. Well, anyway, <laughs> that's that's not the point. The point I'm trying to make is people say, What's your goal? I want to lose weight. Well, really, to lose weight isn't re- that's not the goal, that's the outcome. That's true. Right? So it's 30 smaller subtasks is really what you have to do to be successful for that to be the outcome. Mm -hmm. So like that might be your end goal, but all of the habits and tasks and things you have to do and think about and plan for are all of these pre-plan, pre-do this, download this app to track my calorie, blah, 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 blah. Like it's all that. Right. In the Elizabeth Benton's book, Chasing Cupcakes, she talks about the all or nothing approach and how all or nothing approach, which I see all the time from client after client after client, all or nothing is just another way of saying inconsistent. And it's so true. When I read that, I thought, whoa, that's, that's brilliant. And she's so right. Because the, the approach that people come to me with is, well, even though I haven't worked out in years, I'm going to train six days a week for 90 minutes a day and build some major muscle. Why? Why? Crazy. Why is that your approach? Or even though I eat fast food four times a day right now, I'm going to eliminate all processed food and eat salad five times a day. Like, again, that's a great, that's an all or nothing approach. And what are you doing? Like, yes. Let's, let's and that's, start. And that's great. You, uh, you love where someone's head's at. But it, yeah, exactly. If you eat fast food... Or, pro- or Doritos four times a day on average. And then you're just going to cut it to zero? Like that's going to be a tough swap. <laughs> it's going to be a very tough swap. And, and and it's absurd to go from one end of the spectrum to, and again, this is the all or nothing approach. Like I'm either going to be all in or I'm not going to do it at all. Like why? Why does it have to be that way? It doesn't have to be that way. Be the tortoise, not the hare. Right. So it goes, It kind of, the word consistency In order to be consistent, we have to create an approach for ourselves, which is back up to step one, create a small approach, create something that is easy to obtain so that you can see the win so that you can be consistent. Mm -hmm. And consistency is key. Approach number three, follow the never miss twice rule. Okay, so what do I mean by never miss twice? Tell that to Shaq at the free throw line. <laughs> right. Very, very timely reference for 2024, I know. Right. <laughs> Considering Shows he's been right. retired from the NBA for probably Shows a decade. the last time you watched basketball. basketball. Did, you, did you forget what sport it was I there for a second? For, I did for a second. I almost said baseball. I don't know why that was well, in my head. Shaq could probably could have played any professional sport. He probably sport. could have. The never miss twice rule. So you're going to slip up on your habits. It's going to happen. We're, we are not perfect human beings. Don't expect yourself to be perfect. The rule of thumb is when you fail, you have to get back on that horse immediately and not miss twice. And it's okay to miss. It's okay if you miss a workout. You know, you set a plan to do three, maybe four workouts. If you missed one, no big deal. Just don't let that... Okay, well, I missed Monday. I might as well miss Tuesday and Just Wednesday, Thursday, and then wait until next week to start. Why? Why would you wait till next week to start? It's okay to miss once. Let's just not miss again that week. It's fine if you miss a day of getting in steps. Okay, so you didn't get your 10,000 steps in or your 8,000, whatever your goal is. It's okay. Just because you didn't get your steps in on Wednesday doesn't mean that Thursday and Friday are gone. It's ruined. It just mean like, okay, well, I didn't get my steps on Wednesday. So Thursday and Friday, I'm not going to get off the couch. I'm going to show that step counter. Like, because that's kind of the mentality. <laughs> it is. Or the, the biggest one I see is when people overeat, 
if they have a day of overeating and it might even, you know, might be on a Thursday, they overeat, they overindulge, they go to a part or they, you know, maybe work, your office brings pizza in, and then you end up having too much pizza. And that would happen on a, you know, Thursday, maybe at lunch. And then you're like, well, screw it, I've already messed up, I'm just gonna go ahead and mess up dinner too. And I'm mm-hmm. gonna get like Chinese takeout and eat the entire General Sal's chicken, might as well go ahead and overeat on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, too. And I'll get back on track on Monday. No, that pizza that happened on Thursday at lunch, that can just be the, okay, so what? You overate pizza. Yeah. Guess what? You can make really great choices in your very next choice, Thursday night for dinner. Be right back on track. It's Don't almost like a binge twice. and purge cycle. It absolutely. K- kind of. I mean, it is absolutely. It's, it's restriction binge cycle. Okay. Cool. And so the restriction, right. yeah, the restriction binge cycle. I mean, I'm familiar with it. I <laughs> rode that restriction binge cycle. I feel like everybody like it does was a until Disney they, World ride. Well, I feel like most people do, especially in the in the situation where you're trying to watch your food intake or exercise or whatever. Who, who doesn't experience that? But because I know the I reason, have. But the reason people ride the restriction binge cycle, well, there's lots of reasons, but. One of the reasons is, is because let's back up to step approach one and two. We are having the all or nothing mentality. Mm -hmm. And when you have that all or nothing mentality, you're saying to yourself, I am going to restrict myself from all carbs or all sugar or all fat or fill in the blank for whatever diet you're trying. You're going to restrict it. If you restrict something from yourself, you feel deprived. And when you feel deprived, your body is going to want to crave that thing Mm -hmm. and you are going to ride the restriction binge cycle yeah and it is not a fun cycle to be on and you have to again take small approaches without restriction without deprivation that's kind of what form fits all about is forever fat loss without restriction Mm -hmm. without deprivation making small changes the micro habits man i I had a thought i had a thought pop in while you were talking and it Gone. Is it gone now? Yeah, it's gone. I'm it was, sorry. Man, it was a really good. I I'm thought, sure it was. I thought it was so good. You. Re- it was. <laughs> it really. It probably would have changed the nature of this pod. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Approach number. I feel f- sorry for you that you don't get to hear it. <laughs> and all the listeners. Mostly you, though. Uh. So approach number four is to be patient. You have to be patient. Go ahead. Okay, I remember my thought now. <laughs> you remember your thought. Go ahead. So basically is, um, <laughs> I feel really stupid, is we have to, you have to give yourself grace. You don't make excuses for yourself for not doing it, but giving yourself grace, understanding that I am fell short today in this category. Tomorrow I'm not. I'm not making excuses, but it, it's a fact. It happened. It's a circumstance. Right. Allowing yourself to not have to be perfect. Yeah, it's because I think I know that's something I struggled with, and I think a lot of people do too. Is they're like, "Well, I messed up twice this week. You know, I I'm just I'm not cut out for this. Right. I can't do this." It's like, well, it this is a freaking marathon, man. Right. It's gonna take a long time. Yeah. So you're gonna have struggles along the way. You're gonna have failures, but you're gonna have a lot of success. You just have to have more success than failures. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, part of that is cutting yourself a little slack. Yeah. I mean, the amount of times I've had a client tell me, I haven't been good this week. Well, what do you mean? What does that mean? You haven't been good. That is a weird way to couch it, though. Yeah. But but that's that is the statement that I get. I haven't been good this week or I didn't. And and, and also it's weird because they're also throwing in a a value judgment. Absolutely. Over on their actions. They're like saying, I've been a bad boy. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Not being a bad girl this week. That backs up to mind shift. And if you haven't listened to that episode, go listen to mind shift and, and placing value on yourself and your thoughts about yourself based on your actions. You have to really reel that in and create thoughts that align with your goals. Let's move to approach four, which is be patient. People like to lose weight in a hurry. The calendar is going to continue. The sun is going to come up. The sun is going to go down. The time is going to pass. Why do we feel the need to rush weight loss? Why do we feel the need to rush so many different things that we do in our life? You know, for me, I went 36 years being pretty overweight. You did. Yeah. Then to think like, 
well, it's been two months and I haven't lost. So it's like, well, you took 36 years to get to this point and you expect <laughs> to undo all of that in 60 or 90 days. Like that's cray cray, right? Like that, that ain't going to happen. Right. Guess what? Like after you lose, after you do get to your goal, you have to keep the weight off. So the habits, because this episode is about habits, the habits that you have when you lose the weight have to stay in the pl- have to stay in place forever forever you don't there's not a finish line to weight loss you don't get to create a habit during your weight loss phase and then let go of that habit when you get to your goal that does not get to happen and that's why back to step 1 and step 2 make a small habit and make it consistent because it has to become a part of your identity for you to keep that habit forever so that you can sustain your weight loss. Nobody wants to lose weight so that they can gain it back. And if you want forever fat loss, you need to not be in a rush because the faster you lose weight, and study after study shows, the faster you lose weight, the more likely you are to regain it. Slow and steady is going to win the race in the weight loss game. What race does that not win? Slow and steady. Yeah, I guess Coke use. Maybe <laughs> Coke then, use. Yeah, taking yeah taking Coke. I don't a, ra- a, a car racing, right? Slow and steady does not win. Does not win the the Le Mans. You know, I, I I was actually thinking that might be the only race where it might kind of apply. I mean, lots because of it's races. A, it's li- a twenty four hour race. Like you have to be very very consistent. You can't go to. I'm not like a huge racing nerd or anything, but I don't know. Okay. Anyway, that was a stupid thing for me to say. Of course, it applies to plenty of things. Yes, it does. Of course, it does. Yes, it does. Like literally racing. Yes. Racing anything, Tyler. Oh, oh, you mean the entire Olympics? It just doesn't apply to weight loss. (laughs) Oh, you mean mean every sport? (laughs) Every sport ever. (laughs) Okay. I I feel dumb. I'm sorry. All right. Greatness does take time. So if you want to build habits that are going to stick you have to give yourself patience and you have to give yourself time and stop giving yourself deadlines stop giving yourself that i'm gonna lose this weight by so and so's wedding i'm gonna lose this weight by this vacation that vacation quit it quit giving yourself deadline because you're putting a lot of pressure. And when that event happens, if you did not get to your goal weight, you're going to to feel like a failure. And that takes us right back to mind shift. When you feel like a failure, it definitely does not serve your goals and it doesn't serve your goal long term. So you have to play the long game. You have to go at a sustainable pace and you have to be patient. Approach number five. Focus on your wins. If we focus on the small improvements that you're making, then you're more likely to build motivation to continue with those winning habits or winning actions that you're taking. If your goal is 30 pounds of weight loss and you lost three pounds over the last month, focus on the idea that that's a win. That's huge. That's great. In nine months, you're going to have your 30 pound weight loss at that rate. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Great. Guess what? The nine months is going to happen anyways. So instead of saying, oh my gosh, I have 27 more pounds to lose. No, let's not look at it that way. Let's look at it as a win. Wow. Look at me. I lost three pounds this month. Yeah. Good for me. I'm excited. I am on track. I'm going to continue with these habits because over time I will get there and time's happening anyways. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, be happy, celebrate the wins. Just don't celebrate it with a pizza party. <laughs> this is true. Don't do the uh, Planet Fitness method. Go buy yourself a you know new pair of shoes or, <laughs> or, or just be ha- just be happy. Yeah, you, you don't need to reward yourself with anything like physical or food or just. The, I think the you satisfaction. need to reward me with a new pair of shoes because my shoes have holes in them. Cut your damn toenails. I do cut my toenails. My toenails are just razor sharp. <laughs> Just, I, yeah. I think you should also maybe try a wider toe box. Maybe. I don't know. I ha- what what are the brand I have on now? Hoka's? I think those are Hoka's. I d I tried I try all the brands and I my big toe. You, okay, first off, you don't toe, buy based on brand, you buy based on the fact that the past seven pairs of shoes 
or white sole, gray tennis shoes. They're all identical. I, you couldn't pick them out of a place I'm a lineup. creature of comfort. Aren't you glad I like the same thing every day like you? No. Moving on. <laughs> okay. So finally, I'm going to finish this with a list because I realized I didn't do this in the last Micro Habits podcast, but I want to do it now. I want to finish it with a list of 10 habits. Top 10 habits. That will help lead to weight loss. Now, is what this I, a top am, 10 list? Can we do this like in the style of David Letterman back in the day? <laughs> if you'd like to. <laughs> uh, so I, I do want to preface. That's production that I'm prepared for. I do want to preface that when I make this list of 10, you do not feel like you have to do all 10 of these things right now because that's the all or nothing approach. If you're new to weight loss, perhaps pick one or two off the list and work on those habits. It's also not all inclusive. Like there's other things that could be on this list. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So top 10 things, habits to work towards that will lead you toward a weight loss, weight loss goal. Number one, plan ahead. And that could mean a lot of different things. That means meal planning or pre-tracking food, or if you're going out of town, plan for where you might stop to eat or take food with you, take snacks, healthy That's what snacks. You do. I do. Um, so plan ahead, be a planner, and that will help you with your weight loss. Uh, number two, habit number two, drink more water. That's it. Get in more water. Habit number three, power down your screen earlier at night because it's going to optimize your sleep. You want to optimize your sleep. You want to get better sleep. Number four, get in more steps, just daily movement. Number five, prioritize protein. Number six, volume eat. In other words, fruits and vegetables, people. Number seven, Muscle build. You don't have to do it six, seven times a week. You can do it three or four times a week. Just start. Number eight, manage your stress. Number nine, track. And that's it. Track. What do I mean track? Track your weight. Track your calories. Track your water. Track things so that you know that... Pick you can, one. Yeah, you can measure. You can measure that success that you're, yeah, pick, that you're pick. wanting. Pick one and do it until it doesn't feel like it's a chore anymore. And number 10, positive self-talk. Because positive self-talk is something you have to practice just like any other habit. So those 10 things that I listed, you don't have to do all of them at once. If you are new to weight loss, pick one or two of them. And it might be prioritizing protein and drinking more water. And that might be it. And I'm also not telling you that you have to grab a gallon jug of water and carry it around with you because let's go back to approach number one, start small approach. Number two, be consistent. So it might just be, I'm going to start with 16 ounces of water a day because I haven't been drinking. I've been pounding diet Cokes and Cokes, you know, for the last year, maybe you're starting with 16 ounces of water and you're going to do that and be very consistent over maybe a week, seven days period of time. And if you find that easy, well, great. Let's move from 16 to 20. Yeah. Let's not move from 16 ounces to a gallon. So again, cold, cold we're turkey gonna, is hard for people. It is. And so let's pick your focus. I still, to this day, you know, even though I lost the weight and I've kept it off, I still sometimes have to pick a focus goal for the week. Like, what am I going to focus on this week? You know, I think maybe it might be pre-tracking my food so that I am clear on what I'm eating and I'm being very accurate. So because sometimes I have to reel myself back in and that's okay. So pick a habit and use the five approaches we talked about. I'll recap those five approaches. Number one, make it so small that you cannot fail. Number two, be consistent with that small goal. Number three, never miss twice. If you mess up, not a big deal. Just don't miss twice. Number four, be patient. And number five, focus on your wins. And that's it. And there's your approach to creating habits that will stick. Okay, then. Okay. It's, that e it's just that easy. It's just that easy, right? Follow <laughs> these 10 basic steps. <laughs> so easy. 
All right. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Transform Yourself. And if you found today's discussion valuable, then share it with somebody who might benefit. Remember that you are capable of incredible change and forever fat loss is absolutely possible when we get laser focused on the four M's, mind shift, meal shift, micro habits, and muscle building. It's kind of like the form fit formula. It's not as good as fine fit. (laughs) But mine works every time. Until next time, stay committed to your journey, continue loving yourself, and keep transforming yourself. Adios. Adios.